Hey everyone, welcome to Easter at Canyon Ridge. Together we get to celebrate the biggest celebration, that of resurrection. That Jesus' resurrection was just the beginning of many other transformation stories he would write as the author and perfecter of our faith. Here we go. Listen, um, there are pretty powerful stories that God writes in our lives. And today, really simply, I, I just wanna say a couple things in regard to Easter. That Easter wasn't just a story that happened once. It's a story that's happening over and over and over. That the story written in Jesus in the resurrection on Easter Sunday a couple thousand years ago is a story that is written time and time and time again in our lives when we'll allow him to be the author instead of us. We're all pretty familiar with stories that we try to write in our own lives, and I just gotta be honest, as I look across my life, the stories that I've tried to write on my own, I'm just not a very good author. They all seem to go just about the same way. In fact, we have a simple picture around here that we use to capture the stories that we live in Jesus. This first part is a less than sign, which simply is a characterization of life before Jesus. That when we were trying to do our best, even the things that started out really, really great often kind of diminished over time. We call those a life to death kind of story. But what we're finding more and more and what makes us a people is not earning anything or proving anything in any direction. It's not trying to pull ourselves up with our own strength. It's not us pretending that things are okay when clearly they are not okay. Instead, what it is, is a bunch of people who are inviting Jesus to help us turn the story in a better direction, to like offer him the pen to write a way better script for each and every one of us. And when we do, we're just finding that it's greater than anything that we had imagined for ourselves. And then we often ask other people, because we're curious, do you have a story like that? A story from the very best we could do, never panning out the way we thought, until Jesus got involved and did something we could have never imagined. This is the story of Easter. It's literally the story of Easter Sunday, but it's our story we live over and over. You could say it in 15 seconds, and we often do. It's like this for Carlos. You heard it in the video. He said, there was a time when I was lost, broken. I didn't know what to do. But then Jesus started showing me a better way, and now I'm surrounded by the community I need to be supported and find a better way. Do you have a story like that? We're so familiar with stories that start out really, really great and then fade over time. Like if you just listen to the first minute and a half, two minutes of Carlos's story, you're like, yeah, I've heard that one. I, I, I've lived parts of that one. Or maybe it wasn't drugs and alcohol for you or living the Vida Loca, but maybe it was other things that were just like, my story basically tracks that story. Doing my best, getting by, struggle. Doing my best, getting by, struggle. Well, the thing about Carlos's story is that he realized when he was unsatisfied, with the plot, when he wasn't stoked about where things were going, what he needed was not just a better script, he needed a better author. He said it this way, and I love the way he said it. He said, life is tough as it is, can I get a uh-huh? Right, you all had the fight in the minivan on the way here to prove it, yeah? <laughs> right, or the bomb that went off in your room trying to get everybody dressed today, that's cool. It's real life. We don't do fake around here, let's just be honest, right? Life is tough as it is. And as long as Carlos was holding the pen, he would tell you the story was not getting better. Even the things that started to feel like a fix or just made you feel okay actually just made things worse. He didn't just need a better script. He needed a better author, and that's what makes us followers of Jesus. We've just invited him to write a different kind of story. In fact, we all live this kind of story at some point, the best we can do, slowly diminishing over time. But what makes us followers of Jesus is not that we have it all together, not that we're right about anything or have answers about different things. We just want to look always and only at Jesus and invite him to write something better. Anytime life is not headed the way that we want, we just know that Jesus has something better to say about that. He would write a different kind of story. If all of our stories were life to death stories where they started really shiny and great like that new car and then if you're like me, you had kids who have scooters and bikes and basketballs and everything else in the side of my van, oh my goodness. It just breaks down over time. But listen, 
We've seen that in our own lives and we invited Jesus to write a different story, which is why we live right in line with what uh, the writer of Hebrews says in chapter 12, verse two in the Bible, it says this. We live this life by keeping our eyes on Jesus. We keep our eyes on Jesus. It says he's the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. He's our champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Literally, that word initiate means to author, to write, to originate, to pioneer and go first. You see, the power of the Easter story, as I said earlier, is not that it happened, it's that it's happening. When Jesus wrote the story of Easter, when he lived a surprising story, when everyone thought his story was just life to death, he wrote a death to life kind of story and turned things right side up. He wrote a different kind of story that has a different kind of strength. And he didn't just do it once to say, look how great I am, look how great a story this is, although he's great. He did it to say, this is the kind of story I want to write in your life, which is what the writer of Hebrews means when he is the author and perfecter. Perfecter doesn't mean that we are perfect. It means he's making us more and more whole. Even the word saved or salvation in the Bible means put back together, made whole. We know what fragments in life look like, where pieces try to scrap together in our lives along the way look like Jesus makes us whole. Life with Jesus moves us from less than to greater than. He writes a different kind of story. And the first Easter had this kind of story. Everybody would have thought it was a life to death kind of story. We all think about the resurrection. We see this cross in the middle of a picture, and for those of us who are Christians, we know that's a symbol of hope, of resurrection, of new life, yeah? But in the New Testament, in the first century, that symbol only went one thing. That however compelling the first part of Jesus' life would have been, however it may have started, and the life and friends of Jesus, they would have seen his life unfold with epic teaching, amazing miracles and things along the way. But suddenly, on Good Friday, everything came to a screeching halt. There may have been a time when he was a teacher and a miracle worker, a rescuer, an inviter. He made people whole and showed people value and worth like never before. But in the first century, this cross didn't mean anything after that. It was just the cross, and it was an abrupt stopping point. This this is a life-to-death story in the first century. That cross in the first century meant nothing. It was except the end. That Rome professional killers, if they could do anything well, they could scare the bejesus out of you by ending things. Right, That cross was not like the middle of a story. It was the excruciating, slow, humiliating, public end. If your life was a sentence, the cross was a period at the end over. And on Friday night, all the way through Saturday into the very early hours of Sunday morning, that was the story and everyone knew it. Just like you know the stories that start really great and fade over time, that's what they assumed Jesus' story would be like. And so they grieved, and they grieved deeply. But this, Easter, this is the story, and this is why Jesus should be the author of our stories. Because where everyone else saw an exclamation point or a period that ended the sentence, Jesus changed it for a comma and said, no, there's more. I have yet another part of the story to write. We're familiar with life to death, but Jesus brought us into a story that is death to life, which is why in Hebrews chapter 12, it says this. It says, because of the joy awaiting him, there's nothing joyful about the cross, but there was something on the other side, and Jesus knew it. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And then there's this crazy three-letter word. Do you see it? Now. No, no, no. In the first century, the cross is the end but not for Jesus, because he's a better author than you and me. Was he a human? Absolutely, fully human, but he was also fully God. And so there was more to the story. And so now, on the other side of the cross, he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. There was something better, and so he endured. His friends knew the story of a cross was one that came to an end, but they had never encountered a story like that, where it was no longer life to death, but death to life. The story of Easter is the author of life showing us the kind of story that he is willing to write in our lives. He said it this way, though they didn't understand it at the time. In John chapter 10, Jesus said this, the Father loves me because I sacrifice my life so that I may, and don't skip over these words too fast, so that I may, 
take it up again. Listen, I don't know how good of an author you are of the story of your life, but nobody writes stories like that. Jesus, no one took his life. In fact, he says that. He says this. He says, no one can take my life from me. I sacrifice voluntarily, for I have the authority. This is why Jesus should be the writer of our story. This is the kind of authority he has. I have the authority to lay it down when I want and also to take it up again, for this is what my Father has commanded. Listen, if you're gonna choose an author for the story of your life, like I say this all the time, I don't know well, how well you know you, but I know me, I'm not that good of an author. Can I get an uh-huh? Listen, I don't, look across your life and the stories you've been writing. Pretty good, pretty, you're an amazing character. Some of you guys are the most hilarious, awesome, creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, loving, and supporting people anyone could ever account for. God created you in his image, and there's amazing things about you. You are an amazing character. We're just not that great of authors. We write life to death stories. We write things that start great. Jesus writes stories where we come alive. He is the kind of author. If you were to watch resumes go across your desk interviewing someone to be the author of your life, you should pass over yours pretty quickly based on your track record, huh? But then what we do is we go to work trying to borrow other people's stories as if that's gonna do anything for us. They're just as jacked up as you and me. It's just they have a shiny, happy Instagram, right? And so then we go look in other places. We're like, oh, financial security, that's gotta be a great story. I see that all the time. Listen, you just need to look a little closer. Nothing wrong with financial security. I'm just not a good author. Coping along the way with the things that you saw in Carlos's video feels great at first. Bring some relief at first. It's short term, and there's all kinds of collateral on the other side. Is that right? Listen, if you're someone in a season of life where you're just stuck trying to find your way through and cope with the story unfolding in your life, Carlos found his way to celebrate recovery, and you should too. Any hurts, habits, or hangups in your life, Friday nights every week here, and if Friday night's not good for you, there's another night in the valley, we'll point you to another place to find some people. They're some of the most amazing, genuine, honest people finding their way forward with the help of Jesus. He's writing death to life stories all the time. As you keep looking at resumes, come across your desk, maybe like popularity, relationship, power, influence, promotions, the right neighborhood, the right next step, the right people, listen. None of those things are bad in life, they're just lousy authors, but when a resume comes across your desk where someone can lay his life down out of love for other people and take it back up by his own authority, now you've found an author. Now you've found someone worth writing your story, and followers of Jesus, this is our story, isn't it? That when we wrote a story that was life to death, when we did our best and it looked great to start and faded over time, we just came to a January 9th moment, just like Carlos. You remember January 9th, almost a year and a half ago. I met him right up here by the sound booth, and he said this amazing statement, I just need some help. And we pointed him in the direction of Jesus, and he is writing a death to life story in Carlos's life. We know the story without Jesus. A family broken up, finances a disaster, maybe Carlos on the street, or worse, but instead, What we see in in Jesus is a life together, a community surrounding, a whole different way of life and way forward together. I wonder in your story, who is the author these days? Not who used to be, not who was that one time, not who was once in a while, all the time. Who is the one you trust to write your story? The story that Jesus is willing to write is one of death to life. In fact, we do this thing in simple pictures around here all the time. I just want to invite you to take a look at how where Easter really fits in the whole span of life. And this kind of invitation that God has invited us to, we try to keep it like silly simple. So kids, you can like join right in here. You could draw this picture for your parents, all right? Here it is, marvel at my artwork, everyone. Here we go. The story of Easter is this, is that Jesus showed up. Jesus, not just some like great man, Not just some historic figure, not just some genius, but God and man completely together. You see, when we make a mess of our story, when we write a life to death story, that's where Jesus meets us, in the middle of the mess. This is where Jesus showed up, in a broken world that didn't even know to ask for him. He entered his own creation, and to pay him back for showing up and showing us the way to life, they took it in the way we described earlier. 
But because he was not just man, he was fully God, he took his life back up again. And this Easter story is why he is qualified to be the author. It's why the scripture says he has all authority. Look at that crown. That's like straight Burger King right there. (laughs) Y'all are impressed, I can tell. But here's the problem is that for all the specialness of Easter, sometimes we just take it out of the box once a year. We do the day and we eat really well. And let me just tell you, I hope you eat really well. I hope it takes six days in the gym to undo what you do this afternoon, okay? (laughs) But it's not just a moment. It's not just a story from 2,000 years. You don't take it out of the box and put it back into the box because it's not a one-time story. It's an always, all the time, being rewritten every time Jesus is involved in our story. Don't isolate it because this story that Jesus was writing didn't just show up in a moment one time. It shows up all the time in the world that's way more familiar to us, the world that is broken. Can I get a uh uh-huh? Listen, like cracks everywhere in our life, broken, shattered, dented, and stained like my family minivan. Listen, everywhere I look around my house, if you got kids, can I just have a moment here? The places stains show up, the dents in the drywall, those cool metal water bottles that fall from heights that are like weapons. It's insane, right? The scooter that slides into the side of the van, like every inch of our house says kids were here, and I wanna look at them and say, this is why we can't have nice things. (laughs) Just a little parent therapy for everybody there, all right? But listen. There was a time when God had designed everything as it should be, and his design was good, and it was for our good. That he designed it for us to flourish and experience the deepest kind of joy with one another, with him, and with everything around us. But the story of the Bible also is this, that when he designed everything that way, we did our own thing instead of his thing. That's called sin, and that is why we can't have nice things. Because listen, there's all kinds of scratches, dents, stains, and cracks across my life, and a fair number of them I put there. You know why? Because the pen was in my hand. I needed a better author. And so this Easter story enters right in the middle of all of that. In the midst of the brokenness, God shows up and says, I'm not content to leave you with that. I'm not some frustrated dad with a janky minivan. Instead, I wanna get involved and bring this thing back together. I wanna show up with you, not after you've polished yourself, not after you've put everything back together, not after you try to grab the pen and write a better story with money or coping or people or talent or intelligence or anything else. You can keep all that. I'll put it to better use. Instead, hand me the pen. Jesus says, and I'll write a different story. Turn in my direction and follow my way. I am not here to judge you, John 3 says, after the verse everybody knows. says, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn it. He's not standing at a distance, tapping his feet, waiting for you to get it together, frustrated and impatient. He is entering the mess, showed up, paid for the mess, and says, follow me out. I will write a death to life story. If you're gonna write a death to life story, you gotta meet people in the ugly, and that is exactly where Jesus meets us. And if we would just entrust ourselves to him and say, I'll follow you, I'll turn in your direction. I'll let all the other resumes for scripts in my life just pass right on by, and when I see death to life, Jesus, I'll step your way. And the story of Easter is not that this happened once, it's that, it's, it's that this happens over and over and over in our lives that he invites us then to grow in a different way, shows us a better way to handle our identity, our relationships, our finances, every part of our life. He invites us to a better way, a way of joy, a way of flourishing, a way of impact. And when he takes those dead and broken parts of our life, just like Easter morning, and resurrects those, then we, like all the characters in the story around Jesus, run everywhere and we tell everyone there is a way forward. In this broken world, you may be trying all kinds of stuff to find your way out, but every single time we get snapped back in until a strength not our own, a writer of a better script, the author that we actually need, gets involved. This is the story of Easter. And followers of Jesus, isn't that the story he's been writing in our lives? Can I get a head nod from anybody who has Jesus writing a better story in your life? Listen. (laughs) 
If any of you are here because you just love the person you came along with, or you traveled in town to see some family, or you just found the best Easter lunch and you'll sit next to somebody for an hour to find your way there, (laughs) you're not sure Jesus has anything to do with you and maybe Easter is an important holiday or some historic event, I'm just telling you. Jesus didn't write a one-time story. He said, let me show you the story I will write in every corner of your life that you'll trust me with. And all those people who were just nodding their head or "Uh uh-huh or clapping, those are the people you should ask first. Tell me a story. Tell me about a time in your life when you had wrecked it and Jesus fixed it. Tell me about a time in your life when you tried everything and all the things you thought would fix it made it worse. Like cheap duct tape, it didn't last long. And tell me why Jesus makes a difference because that's the story of Easter. He takes dead things and makes them alive. In fact, in 1 John chapter four, one of the closest friends of Jesus said this, God showed how much he loved all of us. He sent his one and only son into the world so that we might have not just eternal life forever long, but life forever deep, life forever meaningful, life forever peaceful, life the way it was intended to be. He said, this is real love, not that we loved God. It doesn't start with us. Who's the author? Who went first? Who's the champion who initiates and perfects, begins and ends our faith? It's Jesus. It's not that we loved him first, it's that he loved us. We simply hand him the pen of our lives and allow him to write a better story. He loved us so much that he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins so that we could live with him, which is about way more than having nice things. Listen, this is not just a story that happened, it's an experience It's the story of each and every one of us. You saw it in Carlos. He's growing and he's going. He has pointed his life toward Jesus and he's just turning things right side up and over and over and over. God is writing a story of rescue. And I'm just here to tell you, he'll do the same thing for you. So if you're unsatisfied with the direction of the story in your life, I just wanna suggest maybe you need a better author. For those of us who would call ourselves follower of Jesus and we have invited him into parts of our life, I just know this, none of us are done. Can I get a uh uh-huh? Which is actually great news because if we peaked, this is sad, all right? This is not where I wanna, this is not, if this is the top, oh my goodness, there better be somewhere else to go. And there is. Jesus is always writing death to life stories and so whatever corner you've been trying to manage on your own, Jesus, you've done enough, I got this part. Nope, that's the beginning of a lousy story. All of us, whether in just another corner of our life or for the very first time, need a January 9th kind of moment where we just say, I need more than I brought. This is the kind of people that we are. And so listen, we've done lots of ways of celebrating Easter. All I've said the whole time is that there is a better author who is more qualified to lead our lives and he writes death to life stories and he'll do the same thing for you. That's what I've said. And so the way we celebrate that is we sing out and we look into the scripture together, but we also become storytellers. Over and over in the Easter story, the messengers of God and Jesus himself said, go and tell, go and tell, go and tell, go and tell. And so listen, if you're a follower of Jesus, I'm here to tell you, go and tell. Be ready to tell the stories of change in your life. In fact, let me just teach you in two minutes or less how to do this, y'all ready? It looks like this. Think of one time Jesus brought change in your life. Anybody have a time where Jesus brought change in your life? Give me a head nod, right? Just call it time, mind, uh, time to mind. When do you do that? And then just play back the tape. Rewind just like 30 seconds. And 30 seconds before Jesus brought change in your life, use two words to describe that time. January 9th was Carlos, and before that time, if you rewind the tape, you see hopeless, didn't know which way to go, isolated. What are your words before Jesus brought change? And then simply two words after. What was it like once Jesus did bring change? What two words would you use to describe that? For Carlos it was, I have all the support in an amazing community that I need. Then you put it all together, y'all ready? There was a time in my life when I was alone and I didn't know which way to go. But then Jesus showed me a better way, now I'm surrounded by the community of support that I need. Do you have a story like that? Or you could borrow a story from my life. There was a time when I was competitive and isolated on my own, but Jesus showed me with people is way better, so now I'm partnered up, really enjoying life with other people. Do you have a story like that? 
or there was a time in my life when I thought people were problems to be solved. Jesus has taught me there are people to be with as he leads them forward. Do you have a story like that? Listen, I hope you've called to mind a story. We've got a way for you to share that before you leave campus today, but more than that, I just hope that's what you do in the line scooping up your food today. That's what I do, you're hoping for, waiting for your seat at a restaurant. As you get into the car, as messy and dinged up as it may be on the way out of here, I hope you tell the stories because Jesus is honored in telling that story. And your faith is stirred, and let's be honest, we all need that faith to be stirred up. We need to remember and celebrate Easter. We need to remember that there are death to life stories because here's the other thing that's true of all of us, whether we're a follower of Jesus or not. There are stories that are just at the beginning. They look just like less than and that's it. There's a part of each and every one of our lives where we have ambiguity, stress, concern, worry. In fact, just me mentioning those words, you had it like that. Easter's a great day. It's amazing to celebrate all that has happened but we don't need to ignore what's real today to do that. We can hold both. Jesus is strong enough to hold both. And so we tell the stories today, not just so people hear them, not just so we say them, but because you need to hear them. You need to say them because the point in your life where you are stressed, worried, weighed down, you're gonna be tempted to grab the pen of your life and start writing a story, but we are not great authors. Instead, we need to be reminded to hold on to Jesus to look over and over, or like Kevin and Carlos encouraged us, keep showing up with Jesus. Keep showing up with the person telling you stories about Jesus. Keep showing up at Celebrate Recovery. Keep showing up with people who encourage your faith. Keep showing up in a place like this, in your city or in this place. Keep showing up, keep clinging to Jesus, because when we do, this moment, which is full of ambiguity and struggle, because all of us have a next thing, right? None of us have arrived. There's a next thing in front of all of us, and if we'll hold on to Jesus, then one day in the future, maybe three days from now, like Easter, maybe three months from now, maybe three years from now, maybe three decades from now, we will look back at this day, and we will have yet another story where we would say, there was a time in my life, and then Jesus, and now it's like this. So listen, celebrate, celebrate big, and celebrate mostly by telling story after story after story of there was a time in our life and then Jesus stepped in and now it's like this. And most of all, invite people. Do they have a story like that? God writes the very best stories and we're just people finding our way in his direction together. If we can support you in any way, we'd love to. Head over to canyonridge.org. You'll find everything you need to know along with a way to get in touch with us. If this was helpful to you, I encourage you, share it with a friend and don't forget to hit subscribe. We'll see you soon.